Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest big Windows 11 24H2 update, this time in the release preview channel as always, but in the next few weeks time, it will also come on the main release as the feature update or the C release for the month of August. But in this video, as always, we're going to talk about everything that is new, new features, new changes, improvements, and also fixes. And the build that we're talking about today is the build 26100.5061 as I've said for version 24H2. So if you enjoy videos like these, Please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. Now let's begin with the video. Before starting the video, I want to introduce you to private internet access. Using the internet without private internet access is like leaving your phone unsupervised in public places. All it takes is one quick thief to grab it. A virtual private network or VPN for shorts hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. Private internet access is the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads and their no logs policy has been proven multiple times in court. Streaming services such as Netflix have different library options based on where you are located. Using private internet access, you will be able to watch those shows or movies that are not available in your current location. With private internet access, you can also unblock restricted content such as news websites for Canadians, which have been blocked in the past month. And you can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. Make sure to check out private internet internet access in the links from the description below for a great deal. 83% discount and 4 months free. First of all, before talking about anything else, let me show you how to get this update. Basically, all you need to do is to go into the settings app, then go into the Windows update section. Make sure you have get the latest updates as soon as they're available enabled, then click on check for updates. And you should be getting all the latest updates alongside with all the latest features. But of course, I'm also going to make a video in the next period of time in which I'll show you how to manually enable all the features if you don't have have them already. Also, a shout out to Phantom of Earth on Twitter or X.com for providing information about certain features that weren't announced in the official Microsoft blog post. Make sure to give him a follow on Twitter or X.com if you want. First of all, let's begin with the new AI features so that we just get them out of the way. These are available, as you've guessed, only for Copilot Plus PCs. We're talking about a new recall homepage for Copilot Plus PCs with a different UI that was redesigned and a new layout, which is looking pretty good, of course, if you have a Copilot Plus PC. There's also a new tutorial for when you're opening click to do for the first time. And also the new AI agent in settings is now available for AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs. These are briefly all the new AI features. Let's now talk about features that everyone is interested in and features that everyone can see on their computer. First of all, we're going to talk about a new dialog redesign. Basically, Microsoft redesigned the dialog for when apps request access to location, camera or microphone. And this new dialog will appear and then the screen screen will dim slightly and the privacy prompt will appear centered on the screen. I think that is pretty nice. I'm not really sure how I can simulate that to show it to you, but of course it is a redesign and an improvement to the old app request dialog. In this build, Microsoft is also bringing the large clock with seconds in the notification center area. So you can enable that by right clicking on the taskbar, then go to taskbar settings, then scroll down a bit and then go to date and time. It should have here the option show time in the notification center. Enable this and you should see the time here alongside with additional clocks if you have those set up. We also have a few fixes related to the taskbar. First of all, if you accidentally click down and slide your mouse on the taskbar preview thumbnails, clicking it may stop working. This was fixed. And also, File Explorer preview windows may appear when hovering over unrelated app icons in the taskbar. This was also fixed. Related to search on the taskbar, if you search for an image or photos in general, Microsoft will start rolling out a new grid view that will help you find photos even easier. So, for example, if you search for a file and you have multiple files with that name or that filter that you've done to search for that, you're going to see a grid view that will help you see your desired image faster. And also search on the taskbar will now provide a clearer status information. If your search results are incomplete while your PC is organizing files in the background, Windows shows a notice with a link to check progress. Related to widgets on the lock screen, Microsoft is introducing the widgets options in the lock screen for everyone, not only for people in the European economic area. This is slowly rolling out so you may not see it right away but of course as I've said this should be available for all users worldwide not only for those from the EEA region. We also have the new File Explorer AI actions which are now available for images and also for Microsoft 365. So for example if you have an image you can right click on it to access the AI action section or you can even use shift plus F10 to open up the context menu and then you're going to have certain AI actions for example remove background with paint, erase objects with photos, blur background with 
with photos visual search with paint let's click on remove background with paint as an example and it's going to automatically open up paint is going to remove our background using the a function from paint and then save the image and use it somewhere else also when you're signed in with a work or school account and try d file explorer will display people icons in the activity column and the recommended section at the top of the file explorer window and that feature will start rolling out to you if you are connected with a work or school account we also have a fix for the file explorer if you try to use the unblock open in properties for a file it still shows as blocked when you open properties for the next time this was fixed Microsoft is also completely redesigning Windows Solo as part of the enhanced pass key features released in September 2023 so if you go to accounts and then assign in options and then you set up Windows Solo of course you may see the new modernized visual updates related to this sign in option and related to Windows Solo we also have a few fixes for example Windows Solo may recognize your face on the login screen however it would still fail and then prompt you to enter your pin you can fix this by going into sign in options and then select improve recognition and also fingerprint login app for standby is now more robust in this update inside the settings app and then system Microsoft is introducing a new page or section which is called advanced and this is basically an update of the for developers page it will make it easier to find key options for example the end task option file explorer options enable long paths remote desktop virtual workspaces terminal PowerShell sudo enabling the developer mode device portal device discovery creating dev drives and control antivirus behavior I think this is pretty nice that Microsoft has added all these settings that are basically some advanced options that you can use for example related to the file explorer you can show the file extensions show hidden and system files and so on we also have some new dialogues inside settings for example in the activation section we're gonna have these new dialogues that will now match the Windows 11 design principles for example whenever you're trying to activate or the expiration prompts alongside with the new messaging improvements in this section inside settings privacy and security you're gonna see a new section here text and image generation and with this we're gonna be able to see which third-party apps have recently used generative AI models provided by Windows and then you can also choose which apps are permitted to use them putting you in charge of your devices AI experience I think that is also pretty nice you can enable this text and image generation Windows and anyone using this device can use text and image generation and also let apps use this and you have here recent activity of course in this case no recent activity is available in the settings homepage you may start to see a new device card that will show key specifications and usage details of your PC and this will for the moment work only for Microsoft accounts that are in the US also more time and language and keyboard settings have been moved from the old control panel to the new settings app you can now add additional clocks change your time server and customize date and time formatting including AM and PM symbols directly from settings time and language and then date and time also related to language and region number and currency formats Unicode UTF-8 support and options to copy language and region settings to other accounts are now under this section and also inside settings and accessibility and then keyboard you may see the new options such as keyboard character repeat and cursor in great settings so I think this is pretty nice that Microsoft is moving a lot of options still from the old control panel and of course this means that the old control panel is slowly but surely closing into its end because all this important settings will be sometime moved over to the new settings app we also have a new settings fix settings may crash if you attempt to add a security key under settings accounts and then sign in options this was fixed related to the task manager we now have a new task manager CPU usage calculation method basically the task manager will now use the standard metrics to show CPU workload consistently across all pages aligning with industry standards and third-party tools Microsoft is also introducing Windows backup for organizations that is now generally available and with this you can experience seamless device transitions with enterprise great backup and restore of course if you are enterprise or an organization you can take a look into Windows backup for organizations also starting in August 2025 Windows 11 version 24 h2 will no longer include Windows PowerShell 2.0 this legacy component was introduced back in Windows 7 and officially deprecated in 2017 and most users won't be affected in this build Microsoft is also introducing a new default method of debloating uh, your operating system basically removing the default Microsoft Store packages and if you want to access that you can open up the group policy editor and then go to computer configuration expand administrative templates then Windows components then app package deployment and you should see here a new policy setting remove default Microsoft Store packages from the system and this will only apply for newly created user accounts I have an in-depth video created about this you can check that out if you want but of course you can enable this and select which default packages you want to be removed from your system we also have some new app updates a huge shout out to Phantom of Earth for providing information 
information about these new app updates. Of course, as I've said, don't forget to follow him on Twitter or x.com if you want. To get all the new app updates, make sure to open up the Microsoft Store, then go to the download section and then click on check for updates so that you get all the latest updates as soon as they're available. As you can see, I've done an update myself recently before filming this video. I have all the apps up to date. First of all, we have a new app update for the Copilot app with GPT-5 support and also the new option to rename conversations. If you right-click on a conversation, you can have the option to rename it if you want. Also, the Snipping to app update is introducing a new option that is not rolled out to me yet, but if you start a new recording, you're going to have the option to select window mode. So you're going to be able to let windows automatically just record a window and not the whole screen. I think that is pretty useful. Notepad has also received an update and now the context menu will match the context menu of the file explorer and related to the paint app, which has also received an update, but this time for Copilot Plus PCs, if you click on the Copilot menu, you may see the new generative fill option in this menu. Now let's talk about a few fixes in this build. For example, we have a fix for live captions, changing the opacity of live captions and settings, accessibility, captions, and then caption style has no effect. All that is now fixed. Related to input, we have a few fixes attempting to type Chinese with an Amy after copying something with control plus C can result in the first character not displaying. This was fixed. Fixed an underlying issue related to text input framework DLL, which could result in certain apps like sticky notes and notepad crashing. They also addressed an issue with the Chinese simplified input method editor where some extended characters appeared as empty boxes and this update also addresses an issue that prevents typing on the touch keyboard when using the Microsoft Kangi, Microsoft Bopomofo or Microsoft Japanese input method editors. We also have a fix related to Kerberos. There may be an underlying crash in Kerberos when attempting to access a cloud file share. Related to login, Microsoft addressed some underlying cases which could lead to you seeing a blank white screen or a screen saying just a moment for a few minutes and logging into your PC. Related to apps crashing, a underlying issue was fixed with dbgcore.dll, which could result in certain apps, including explore.exe crashing. Related to audio, they addressed an underlying audio service hang, which could impact the ability to play audio in certain cases. Related to device management, this update addressed an issue that prevented some system recovery features from working properly due to a temporary file sharing conflict. This affected certain device management tools and disrupted key functions on some devices. And finally, we have a fix related to performance. This update addresses an issue that slows applications installation on ARM64 devices. Some installers might take longer to complete. So this is basically the big update for the month of August for the Windows 11 version 24H2. This is only for the release preview channel at the moment, but as I've said, in about one or two weeks time, it will also come to the main release. For additional information about this build, new features, and also other changes, you can check out the article below, the official Microsoft blog post, or Phantom of Earth on Twitter or x.com. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Jumani from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.